Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about the market news, market updates, some things to think about moving forward into the second half of 2020. Stay tuned for more information on the stock markets. So ever since last week and early this week, a lot of us have seen the news. Tesla is on the rise once again. I made a video a couple months ago during the initial market crash where Tesla was dipping down into the $400 range. And back then, a lot of people were speculating that the company was soon to go out of business. They're running out of cash. Investors didn't feel confident at all in the company. And back then, I made that video saying how I believe that Tesla is here to stay. The underlying technology, the user base, the customers, are excited for their product. And this is something that will be able to deliver actual value in the upcoming years and lead us into the future of technology and the future of cars. Unlike some other companies, Zoom trading at ridiculous PE ratios, Tesla actually has a product. They're trying to become profitable and maybe even break into the S&P 500. All right, so ever since Tesla has shot way up into the 1700s, back to all time highs, People are now wondering, is Tesla in a bubble? Have they gained too much too quickly? And when will all of this come crashing back down to earth? And one thing I do want to mention is I think a lot of just retail investors and ordinary investors do trade a lot based off of market sentiment and how companies are doing, what's going on in the news. So it doesn't surprise me to see that this past week, Thousands of Robinhood users added new shares of Tesla. Same thing happened when the, and even back when we saw a huge pop in the travel airline industry, thousands of retail investors added shares, added stocks in those companies. So it's no surprise that a lot of people have some short-term memory. I'll remind the audience that a couple months ago, people said Tesla was running out of money when they had to shut down their Fremont factory when they were running into troubles opening up their factory in Germany. A lot of people doubted the company, but now things are looking good. People are talking about profitability, talking about new car deliveries, self-driving technology, S&P 500 news. Price targets are through the roof. So we're at a place in the market where we've been in this pandemic for a couple of months now. This week and next week, the quarter two earnings season is going to be an exciting time to see what happens and how this sets us up for the rest of the year, the back half of the year. Earlier this month, it seemed like the U.S. was on the road to recovery with states slowly opening up, businesses opening up. But with the recent new wave of infections and summer traveling season coming upon us, we've seen that some states have started to take back those opening orders, shut things back down. So we really don't know what's gonna happen if we are in for another round of shutdowns, another round of stay at home orders. And to add on to all of that, unemployment, extended unemployment benefits are ending at the end of this month. So ever since we had that first drop in March, people were talking about and speculating about when we'll see a next drop, when we will retest those March lows. But I think we've come a long way from then. I think we've really had a chance to understand the pandemic, understand the impacts on the market and on companies. And I think now we're at a point where, especially after Q2 earnings, we'll be able to see the full effect of the pandemic because Q1, the first half was still January, February business as usual. But Q2 is going to cover most of that quarantine initial shutdown time frame, And we'll really be able to separate the winners from the losers, companies that We'll be able to make it through this. We're looking at technology, stay at home stocks, and other companies that traditionally had a weak balance sheet coming into this year, had debt problems before, and this has just compounded that. Companies that may be more likely to experience bankruptcy and further hardships. So a lot of that initial shock to the market happened because we didn't really know what was going on. What was happening and how things would play out. But since then, we've seen where the Federal Reserve and monetary policy has stood on this issue. We've seen the physical policy, the stimulus packages, and they're also discussing passing another wave of stimulus as well. 
So we have a little bit more clarity as to a lot of the unknowns that we didn't know back in March. So with these reasons in mind, I don't think we'll see as drastic of a sell-off or a crash as we did back in March. Right Today on Thursday, the market traded flat for most of the day, not too much movement throughout. I think tomorrow, shortly after you watch this video, we'll get a better sense of where things are going and moving on through next week as well. So I think these are very important times if you're interested definitely pay attention to the news see how the market is reacting to this earnings season talk about the growing virus concerns as well it seems like the news these days anytime we have some increases anytime things are going up it's always talk about optimism outlook on reopening on a vaccine on a cure anytime the market crashes we're seeing headlines about concerns over the vaccine concerns over shutdown it's always the same type of things over and over again and not everyone's necessarily digging deep into those investor presentations, reading the financials, getting a sense of the company, its operations. We're going off of the news, what we're seeing, what we're exposed to. But the truth is, we don't know yet. It's too soon to tell exactly which side will prevail. Will the optimism and the vaccine news coming out be able to trump the doubts over growing unemployment, debt crisis, mortgages, delinquencies, bankruptcies, all of that stuff. It's too soon to be seen. But we do know that in the U.S., the Fed, the government's taking a stand to support the businesses through this time. And just one last word of caution on vaccine news and hope. There are a couple companies with stage three clinical trials. But as with a lot of things, it's still too early to see exactly the effect that these will have. And studies have shown that only about 50% of Americans will actually go and get the vaccine if and when it is released. Some of these concerns may be valid that they may be rushing these through trial. We definitely don't want to put political motives over health motives, making sure that these are safe and don't risk any long-term side effects of taking these rushed developed drugs. So there is a lot of doubt and uncertainty, and this isn't a magic pill, a cure-all for all the problems. It will take a while for the vaccine to roll out. It'll take a while for people to get the vaccine. And all this said, things will get worse before they get better with the school openings and the summer travel season, right? If we see kids start dying left and right in schools, that's not good news for the market. Things might get worse before they start to get better. So I think at the end of the day, it's too early to tell what exactly is going to happen. Some notes that I have for us to think about moving forward. First, I mentioned the pandemic news, especially right now, a lot of things are tied to what's going on with the pandemic, how it's impacting businesses. We know retail, hospitality, travel, technology, pharmaceuticals, all that stuff has a big impact. Travel, we look like we might be opening up entertainment, hospitality, but once again, We've seen Vegas casinos putting more restrictions. And even with restrictions, people might just ignore them and travel anyways. So although that might be bad for the pandemic and for public health, it could be good for companies seeing more revenue come in. But as always, be careful with the news. Be careful with the market sentiment. Leads me to this next point, fear of missing out. We see Tesla shot up like crazy. We'll probably see another spike in the travel hospitality sector as well if vaccine news or other tax incentives for traveling gets released. So volatility is very high, especially now. There's a lot of money to be made, but also to be lost. So be careful looking at different companies and what they're doing on a day-to-day. -day. And third point, right, as always, look towards the long run time horizons, especially if you're young, you have decades to invest in the market, build up your investments, build up your wealth. So keep that in mind. That's all I had for you today on the market updates. If you have any other questions or comments, be sure to leave them down in the comment section below. If you liked the video, thought it was useful, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet. Thanks for watching.